absolute pleasure to be here this afternoon with this panel of experts. We're going to be talking through with you opportunities and learnings in respect to inline store location and solving a few of the problems related to how inline shops could choose their stores and optimize their trading densities in the malls. First, let me say that this is the century of shopping centers, particularly here in India. With urbanization abounding here in India, with so many more people moving into the urban areas, these two trends represent a major opportunity for both retailers and mall developers. And the opportunity for customers and retailers, in my view, here in India have never been better. And the bedrock, the foundation of retail, particularly here in India and particularly in developing countries around the world, has always been the smaller retailer, the inline retailer. They are the ones who produce the juice, the, the visceralness, the sexiness of retail. And our panel of experts today are going to be, ex going to be taken through a series of questions where we're hoping that you will learn a great deal about store location and the various issues around performance that will positively benefit you as an inline retailer. Experts, you ready? So when we consider inline retail, we consider the smaller shops, the vanilla stores, we need to start with a very profound question. What makes a mall right, correct, appropriate for a particular brand? And Abhishek, I wonder if you would lead the questions by responding to that. What makes a mall correct or right for a vanilla tenants brand? Well, I'll, I'll share my experience on, uh, on how we leased our Delhi mall and uh, at least uh, what came out of the, of the mix that we planned for Delhi. And the first thing that we did was we profiled the customers who were the primary customers who would be coming to the mall. And that's when we realized that uh, what is the youth, what is the other generation, and what is the kind of customer profile that's going to visit our mall. And that's when we created our mix. The second thing that we looked at was what are the kinds of stores that there are already in the adjacent malls that we have. So when we started building the mall, there were already four shopping centers in the vicinity. So which of the clients, which of the tenants were doing well in those malls and what are, what are the ones that we wanted in our mall? So the trading densities, the shop sizes in those malls were considered and that is when we uh, created our mix. From the customer's point of view, I think what, what went very well for our mall was, I think one of the primary reasons was that the shop was no, the mall was not sold. It was a completely leased mall controlled by the developer. So it went very well. Uh, the control was there. The, it was designed in a way that was very uh, retail friendly. We um, we took it, we, we took in uh, the point that uh, what are the kind of neighbors the shops will have. How much area are we dedicating to food? How much area are we dedicating to department stores, etc. So the mix was created right. The mall was controlled well, and uh, the shop sizes and the stores were cut out in the right size. I think that worked very well for our uh, retailers in the mall. So it's tenant mix, it's design, it's orientation, it's positioning within the shopping center. All right. And would you agree that internally to a shopping center, site selection is important as well? Would you care to make a comment about internal site selection? Internal site selection obviously becomes very important. So uh, when we go and lease to the retailers, everybody wants to be right in front when you enter in the atrium, close to the escalator, probably um, highest traffic area. But really, it depends. Uh, it also, it, I mean, one has to also go with the uh, with what the developer is planning for the mall. I mean, when when I do my shopping center, there are hundred shops, and I need to figure out that which is the kind of brand I want to put where, which floor, what is the size. So, of course, uh, it is important that you choose uh, the right shop in the uh, shopping center, but as a developer also one must figure out that which are the shops that you want to give to the particular brand. Uh, Rachna, you're a retailer of great note here. Um, would you agree when it comes to the different site selection criteria for a new mall, 
How would you go about it with your chain? Uh, the size of the mall, the tenant mix that the mall is going to have. What is and actually who's going to be managing the mall? I think that also becomes extremely important. The number of malls that can get built in the country, but not all of them are successful because mall management itself is a different skill. And we find that in a lot of places, while a lot of planning goes into building the mall, not as much time and effort goes into managing the mall once it is built. Yeah. So I think places where the builders actually operated on a lease basis, where they maintain the management of the mall becomes very important. The right tenant mix becomes very important. Also, uh, what they're going to do in terms of continuously ensuring that walk-ins to the mall, it becomes a joint responsibility. It's not just a brand responsibility to generate the walk-ins. It's also a mall responsibility to generate the wall. But would you say that as you're now a retailer coming into a mall, the adjacencies are important, who your neighbor is, uh, who the anchor tenants are going to be. I'm, I'm trying to drill down okay. to a, a greater level of detail sure, for the sure. benefit of everybody sure. here. To what extent does that influence your decision? To a very large extent. Elaborate. So if there are sections in the in the mall that uh, the tenant mix or it is supposed to be sportswear, then we'd like to have the Manchester United store located in that area. There is another section to the of the store that may of the mall which may be more catering to ethnic wear or women's wear or formal wear. And we find that most malls are trying to differentiate areas. So there would be a section where you'd have eight or ten shoe stores together. But does that work for you? Yes, I think it As does. As a retailer, so in I other words, clustering your adjacent, your your common retailers rather than um, a comparative shopping experience is is better for you. And also having a right anchor or couple of anchors. If the mall has two entrances, that are there anchors at both ends of the mall. How? What is the access to the multiplex? Is it through the mall or is it a separate? entrance to the multiplex because then it's not generating the walk-ins yeah. into the mall per se. Uh, is the mall going to actually start with a fully functional food court? Because we find that having a functional food court becomes a very important part of the entire mix. Okay. Well, you've touched on my favorite subject, food. For me, you can open and carry on running a shopping center on the food alone. Agoro, you represent our food retailers here today. In your, from your perspective, how important is the adjacency to a food court? How important is the adjacency to a cinema and the family entertainment center to your kind of a business? Uh, I think as uh, Rashna just pointed out that, uh, especially from a food court's perspective, it is not only important that, you know, where is it located, which floor, where is the entry and more importantly, where is the exit of the food court? Uh, there are malls where the exit of the food court lands on the on the first floor. I mean, people just exit out of the mall. So we lose a lot of, a significant chunk of potential customers. I mean, imagine going to a movie and uh, moving out at 9.30 in the night, you know nobody's going to cook at home. No, but I, I, so, I don't mean to be rude. I think this, this is the most important consideration that the mall represents an investment in its footfall. Yep. Would you agree? Yep. And as a result, what Gaurav has said is absolutely critical to the success of any shopping center. Why on earth would you want to say goodbye to your footfall when they've come out of a movie? Remember, they're cold and they're hungry. You want them to go through your entertainment center and past your food and sit in the food court. Am I right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think now, but things have changed. Uh, uh, the markets have, uh, I mean, the developers, the retailers, they've all seasoned and they've learned it the hard way. So most of the good developments you see today, all the food court, uh, you know, food courts, they are at the exit of the mall, and people, you know, tend not to lose the footfalls, as you rightly said. Okay. So I think that's been taken care of now. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very conscious about time. We're trying to extract as much information out of these expert panelists as, as possible. So I'm going to move on a little bit. And I'm going to ask you, Jaideep, as an expert in respect to the leasing of shopping centers and the placement of tenants from a technical and a deal point of view, how important is store size in respect to rental, cost and performance? Uh, it's very important in terms of uh, getting the stores, it's very important for getting the stores uh, size right. I think uh, from a retailer standpoint, uh, there's an underlying thing that you need to have uh, significant presence in significant locations. 
uh, there's a micro market and you need to have certain uh, stores to address that micro market. So when I talk about the significant location, obviously you have the right shopping center, right tenant trade mix and whatever my other panelists said, but uh, to get the right uh, significant presence, you need the right size. And uh, it's important to look at it from a, from a three to six year time frame from a retailer that you don't want to go too small uh, you would you would make money the first uh, first year or first from day one. I need but, to interrupt yeah. you. It's a very technical issue, the store sizing. But right. how do you guide your clients and retailers and particularly mall managers to optimize store size? See, uh, now we have like you know uh, six to eight years experience of uh, you know re retailers being there in malls where you have the trading densities which are there. And uh, it has to be a win-win situation for the retailer as well as the developer. And uh, you know, keeping that in view, uh, to make to optimize trading densities from year one to year three, we kind of arrive at the right size, which is a win-win situation for both the developer and the retailer. But Jaideep, you're aware that internationally, the clock starts ticking from day one as a store opens. Yes. We don't have the luxury anywhere else in the world of a three year, let's bleed in and open and see how things go kind of thing. Right. How do we, what do we say to the market out there? How, what pearl of wisdom would you share with them in respect to how to optimize their store size? I'll give you an example. Would you say, take the biggest store you could possibly afford or take the smallest store and optimize and grow from there? Yeah, so I, I would say like for example, if we talk, we're talking about vanilla retail and uh, a particular brand can do a, a thousand square feet store and uh, he can also do a, probably a, a two thousand square feet store. Uh, what I'm saying is that to have a significant presence in a significant location, it's important that that thousand in a significant location, he should look at 1500, probably 1500 to 2000 square feet. I'm not saying he goes beyond that. So he would be profitable, but he would also have a significant top line because he would be able to, uh, the trading density to rely on that. So, Rachna, you're running a successful retail chain. How do you evaluate store size relative to the performance and the cost base that is reflected in that sort of a business? See, I think uh, the store size has got to do with both the, the frontage as well as the depth. So a lot of times one may settle for a smaller store than what would what we would like for the brand, but the frontage is better. So you're getting huge branding, you're, which also generates a lot of um, walk-ins and marketing. So you want a big wide shop, which is very, very narrow. Yeah. Which is not deep, <laughs> which is not deep, not na it's going to be very wide, but yeah. not so deep. So I think the store and the second thing that is dependent on the store size is also, uh, is it going to be a flagship store in that city? Is it the first store in the city? Is it the third store in the city? Do you already have a store that is in a mall or on the high street close by? Would you agree with me that a business, a new store in an existing shopping center that's trading well, takes a different kind of decision making than a new mall in a new city? Absolutely. You'd be able to take a, a much more, it's still a risk, but it's a, it's a risk with a lot more parameters already defined if it's an existing mall. Yeah. So if you're if you're opening a store like a lot of the stores we we opened recently on Manchester United have all opened in existing functioning yes. malls. So you already know who the people coming in are, you know whether they are the right clientele, you know who your neighbors are. It's not a plan that you're seeing that by the time the mall actually opens, a lot of it is moved around. Yes. So the risk is I think a lot higher when you're uh, when you're actually looking at a at a new mall. That's a and even when you are working with partners that you have worked with in the past and have run very successful malls in the past, sometimes the equation may not hold when they open yes. a new mall and something goes wrong whether it's, and most of the time it's probably all about location, location, location. It does go wrong. Gaurav, you're in the food business. Yeah. To what extent do the learnings from the fabric clothing business reflect on your on yours are they the same learnings I think see more or less it's the same because it's all about uh, it's all about the whole customer experience and I mean be it a fabric store or any kind of a retail product you have 
Uh, you know, it's all about, uh, I mean, we don't really sell food, we sell, uh, you know, sell an experience. So to that extent and what is, what the continuous fight that all the retailers in this country have is about maintaining those service standards. Uh, and that's really a challenge because of the quality of uh, manpower available. Yeah. I think that's important. Now you run restaurants and you run food courts. Yeah. Obviously for you it's important to have as big a food court as possible. Uh, uh, not not really uh, because uh, it's all about you know how well that food court is planned and uh, you know you might have a very big food court uh, in a mall which does not offer so many offerings there uh, you know and it's in food the perception is that you know all, all right this food court doesn't work let's not go there yes. so right so uh, you should have the right uh, uh, you know uh, kind of food court with the right kind of uh, seating uh, available over there and uh, uh, Rajneesh is sitting here uh, in orbit. I must congratulate. They plan their food course really well. I mean, uh, for a city like Pune, the food court is of the right size. Again, Hyderabad, it's it's much bigger. So I think it's all about the uh, uh, the right kind of uh, and how many. Uh, what is the kind of cuisine mapping that the mall does? Yes, that's very important for us because I mean, you have three guys selling the same kind of cuisine in a food court with 500 people sitting over there. Don't get me Doesn't started make about exclusivity in food courts. <laughs> but we, what is very, very clear, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, is that Indian consumers walk, walk and talk and shop with full tummies. Abhishek, you run one of India's most successful shopping centers in a most competitive market. In respect to store sizing, how do you feel about retailers saying, that they want a thousand square foot and you know that they only can manage 800 square foot. What do you advise them? How do you deal with that? I tell them that I'll give only 800. That's one. Yeah. And uh, the other thing that we really do is that uh, we kind of figure out that what is the amount of sportswear that we want? What is the amount of men's formal that we want? And various store sizes. So if you have four stores that could be 1,000 square feet, 2,000 square feet or 500 square feet. So depending on which brand fits the store size, we put that in. But what we really look at is what is the uh, floor space that we want to give to a category and then we allocate stores to particular brands. How do you base your decisions? Do you, do you look at the market from a trading density point of view? Absolutely. We look at what the, the at, at least in Delhi we had that advantage that we knew what they're doing in other shopping malls in our area and uh, somewhere in South Delhi or East Delhi, so we are based in West Delhi. So we knew what they're doing there. We also knew what they're doing on the high street in West Delhi and accordingly we planned the store sizes. Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our very capable host has been uh, telling me that I've got to remove my head. No, now he's blushing. Huh? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think that the learnings abound. We could be sitting here for 200 minutes, not just 20 minutes. I think that there are incredible learnings out of the session here today, particularly for the inline retailers, that size matters. And you've got to choose your size very, very carefully because it has all sorts of unintended and intended consequences relating to rental and performance and trading density. The width of the store and the breadth of the store is critically important. It's important to have an effective and efficient mall that is up and running and is well managed. I'd like to thank our panelists most sincerely for their time and for their expertise and for their incredible ability to extend and share with you their wisdom. And I'd like to end on one particular note that in res and it's, I suppose, more indicative of our industry, the mall management business, which Rachna, you mentioned in one of your responses. That in mall management is all about how to ensure that retailers can do their job as best as possible. Nothing more and nothing less. And I'd like to say that how we manage our malls today must surely benefit, influence, and enhance the value of our retailers and our customers' experiences. Ladies and gentlemen, a big warm thank you to our panelists, and thank you. Good stuff.